Hand number 86. A call for card contains clues. This is from a 2-5 No Limit Hold'em cash game. A pretty passive and tight player limps early and ends up calling a $20 raise. Four players see a flop of Queen-9-7 Rainbow. The preflop raiser makes a small bet, $20 into $80. One player calls and then the tight player calls last to act. Before the turn comes, the tight player calls for a card, shouting, 10. Let's examine this statement. We know that most verbal behavior from non-aggressors will make weak hands likely. With this call for a card, sets have become unlikely. Also, players who actually have a decent draw are unlikely to call for the card they need, as they don't want to scare away action if they do hit. This becomes less true for very unlikely hands, for example, it's entirely possible this player might call out 2 if he had pocket deuces, because he knows that A, it's unlikely to happen, B, people aren't likely to believe him because it's so disconnected from the board, and C, even if he hits it, his hand would still be far from the nuts. But aside from all this, for normal straight and flush draws and higher sets, it's unlikely for a person to call for the card they actually need. Again, to remind you, the flop is queen 9-7. This player's call for 10 means that the straight draws, king-jack, jack-8, and 8-6, have all become unlikely. Queen-10 is also unlikely, as he wouldn't want to draw attention to top two pair if he hit the 10. Besides, all of these hands are unlikely from a fundamental perspective, because we know this player is tight and that he limped early and called a raise. What else do we know? We know that players who call for cards often do so truthfully, but in an indirect, often slightly humorous way. What hand would a 10 help in this case, but not help a lot directly? A hand containing a jack is one possibility. If he had ace jack or queen jack, or pocket jacks or jack nine, a 10 would give him an open-ended straight draw. Many calls for cards are indirectly truthful in this way, with the player in a somewhat humorous manner calling for a card that will give them more outs. Also, if the card does come, it might scare the speaker's opponents and slow them down which is another reason people like to do this, free rolling for a free card. The turn arrives at 10, just what the player called for, and it puts two clubs out, so the board is queen, nine, seven, 10. This tight player is second to act, and he bets out $40 into the $80 pot. If you were an opponent in this hand and ignoring the other players, this player's verbal behavior, which indicates weakness, should encourage you to raise him. Because he is likely to still have a straight draw here, there's a good chance he'll call a raise that's not very large, so you could size it smaller if he wanted to call. If he calls the turn raise, it's very likely he'll be folding on the river if he doesn't improve. Another interesting thing about this hand, if we knew that this player was very passive and not the type to bet only a straight draw here, we could also surmise it's likely that he picked up a flush draw. Having an open-ended straight draw and a flush draw, and having just requested a card that actually hit, all of this can influence a usually passive and tight player to take an out-of-character stab at the pot. Having played with this player a lot, I guess that he most probably had both a straight and a flush draw here, and knowing he limped early and called a raise, I thought ace-jack of clubs was very probable. Sure, he had to call a flop bet with only runner-runner possibilities, but that wasn't too hard to believe even for a tight player. He had three cards to a royal flush on the flop, and he only had to call a small $20 flop bet which also closed the action in the $120 pot. Everyone followed to this player's turn bet and he showed ace jack of clubs. Hand number 91. A chip flipping tell in the 2011 WSOP. During the heads up finale of the 2011 WSOP main event, Martin Stashko was very stoic. His behavior was very consistent from hand to hand and he was, as far as I could tell, largely unreadable. There was one hand, though, where his behavior made me very confident he had a strong hand. Hines raises a 3.4 million and Stashko calls. The flop is ace-9-3 with two diamonds. Stashko checks. Hines bets 3.8 million. Stashko calls. The turn is the ace of spades, so the board is ace-9-3-ace with two diamonds. Stashko checks. Hines bets 8.4 million into 14.8 million. This is where it gets interesting. Stashko waits about 25 seconds, then starts gathering chips in front of him. He pulls over enough chips for a call, so it looks like he's preparing to call. Then he pauses, looking back at Hines several times, as if thinking. 
Then he starts to flip a chip end over end on top of his chip stack. He does a complete flip of the chip 14 times. Then he starts to gather chips again, this time pulling over more chips from his other stacks that were previously off to the side. He then raises to 18.5 million. There are two interesting behaviors here. One, flipping a chip before raising, and two, his pause and hesitation before his raise. Both of these behaviors will make strong hands more likely. Let's look at each of them. Flipping a chip is what some behavior analysts call a gravity-defying behavior. People who are relaxed tend to have more upward-directed movements that defy gravity. Examples of gravity-defying behaviors in everyday life include raising eyebrows, raising arms in triumph, and bouncing legs up and down. People who are anxious are more restrained in their behavior and are unlikely to have these loose upward motions. When it comes to playing with chips, there will be a good amount of variety. Some players play with their chips a lot. You've probably played with players who riffle their chips constantly. Maybe you do it yourself. For a lot of the more common and consistent behaviors, it will be hard to find a pattern. Flipping a chip end over end, though, is an especially loose and playful behavior. When associated with a bet, I think it's a generally reliable sign of relaxation, more so than the more common chip riffling. But I wouldn't read too much into it unless I'd been able to watch a player for a while to see how it might be showing up. For example, if Stashko were constantly flipping chips before making bets or raises, it wouldn't be likely to have any meaning. But as I've said, Stashko was very stoic. This was the first time in the match that I'd seen him play with his chips in such a way when associated with a bet or a raise. He did sometimes flip chips in non-aggressor spots. Because he had been so stoic and restrained in his behavior prior to this, his chip flipping in this hand, followed by his raise, made it likely it was a small but reliable leak of relaxation with a strong hand. If he were bluffing or making a raise with a vulnerable hand, it's unlikely he'd have this playful, gravity-defying behavior. Let's consider the pause in his chip gathering. Bluffers like to convey confidence and certainty. For this reason, they're unlikely to have pauses and hesitations in their chip gathering. Players betting strong hands, conversely, can have a motivation to seem uncertain, which can lead to some hesitating behaviors. Also, players with strong hands may be considering the best bet sizing, which can also lead to hesitating behaviors. If Stashka were bluffing here, he wouldn't want to, purposefully or accidentally, seem uncertain about whether to raise. If we were going to bluff, he'd just want to put the raise in all at one time in a neutral way. He wouldn't want to potentially make Hines suspicious by looking like he was going to call and then seeming to change his mind. When I saw both of these behaviors from Stashko here, and knowing how stoic he'd been up to that point, I was very confident he had a strong hand. Hines didn't have the same opinion, though. He called this raise with, as we learned after the hand, 7-6 off suit, just 7 high, no draw, apparently with the goal of potentially stealing on the river. On the river, Stashko bet $20 million into $52 million, and Hines folded. Stashko had ace-nine of clubs for the turned full house. 